George Tech head coach Jeff Collins. Coach, if you could open up with a brief statement before we have questions. Yeah. Uh, been coaching a long time. As a coach at times, you can distance yourself from the emotion and be very pragmatic in what's going on. This one, the, the way these guys invested, believe in what we're doing, believe in each other, compete and fight and do everything that we ask, and to come out and play at a really, really high level and then fall short is uh, is painful. I hurt for them. Uh, hurt for the coaching staff. Because we've got some some special young men in that locker room that really, regardless of circumstances, regardless of who's out, regardless of who's injured or what, it doesn't matter. They just come out and play and compete and fight over and over and over and over and over. And I do not take that for granted. And I hope nobody in the Georgia Tech fan base takes that for granted. Because it ain't easy to do what they did. And the fight and the battle, regardless of the circumstance, uh, it's an example for how to lead your life and how to handle adversity. And 24 hours from now, we'll put the ball down again and get ready for another good ACC opponent uh, at home in Bobby Dodd. And I trust that our fan base, just like they did the last time we were home, will come out and support these guys and because uh, they're really, really close. We talked about last week being three inches away, and I, don't, I think it was probably that as well today. Really, really, really close. And that doesn't end up on the record book, but I know what they're doing and how they're doing it, and they're doing it the right way. And now we just got to make sure we finish and finish strong uh, in games uh, and the last uh, three regular season games of the season. Questions? It was kind of amazing to see James's turnaround after probably his worst game at quarterback to come back and play his best probably this season for you all around. Kind of what did you see from him and what kind of challenges you guys give him this week to kind of get things right? So we have a process. He's learning our process. He had a setback uh, in the first half a week ago, right? Didn't didn't play his best. Would like to have some throws back, but the culture that we have, we are building, we are putting in place, prepares them to handle adversities. It prepares them to handle setbacks, and we coach them through it. And we're there for them. They know how much we care about them. They know how much we love them. We know we teach them to attack success to go out there and make plays. And if you don't, if you have a bad day, you know what, we still love you and we still support you and we know how good you are. You had a bad half. We know you're a really good player. Here's some things you can do better so that you can play better and play at a high level. And James did that. Yeah. Trust the coaching. Yeah. Trust the coaching, believes in what we're doing and came out, had a really good week of practice. He had a really good week in preparation. The things that he might have left on the table last week in preparation, he didn't do that. He's learning how to be a big time college football player. Um, and we are teaching him how to do that at a high level. And then he came back, he responded, players rallied around him, and uh, he played really well, really proud of him. Talk, Jeff, when, when was the last time you've been this rawly emotional after a game, and I don't know where the the red eyes and the, and the, the kind of strained voice. Sure. Uh, where did that come from? Yeah, we just, I mean, we we invest a lot um, in this program and in these young men. Uh, it was our final home, our final away game for these seniors during the regular season, and we kind of celebrated them last night. Uh, at the team hotel, Luke Corral, our head strength coach, does an amazing job with the mental makeup. Um, 
of our football program and we sat around we told stories about even though it's a small senior class there's only six that are that are playing that were here before two that we brought in Tyler Davis and uh, Jared Southers and just what they mean to us as an organization uh, and as a culture is is special and we want to honor them in every single thing that we do and uh, all week we talked about finding a way to make one more play that we need to make because we're so close and I hate that we couldn't make it and I hate that I couldn't coach one extra play uh, to give them the success uh, on the result that they they fought for and uh, so that I mean it's it hurts. So. Right. You talked about injuries and unfortunately all those injuries were guys up front and then you lost Clanton during the game for a, for a portion of the game. Yeah. What did you see from the guys that stayed out there and fought? Yeah I mean it's just you know Chris Martin didn't play and Twan Owens is out for the season. Um, Bruce Jordan Swilling is out for the season and it's just a, a next man up mentality. Uh, whoever's out we're going to rally. Uh, we're going to put the ball down and we're going to play and we're going to support each other um, and battle and fight the way we practice and you guys I'm glad you guys come out there to witness it every day uh, the way we practice the reps that we get uh, across the board for Paris for times uh, you know like this um, yeah, I mean, they fall they battle they stay together you know all those things against a really I mean that's a really good football team um, and I knew watching you know, watching the, the <coughs> tape all week that you know the quarterbacks <laughs> he's an elite player and uh, obviously he showed that uh, today um, there was one play today I, if we could have back um, and I think as an entire organization uh, I thought we relaxed on the squib kick right before half learning experience you're building a culture um, you cannot relax at any point in the game especially against a team that's explosive as they are, have the returners that they have, and then having a quarterback like they do. Uh, you cannot relax for a single second. I thought we relaxed. Uh, we talked about it at halftime. And, uh, you know, we've got to learn culturally and as a program that the margin of error, the bigger the games get, the smaller the margin of error is. And one rela relaxation, one play that we're not just all in, um, it can hurt you. And I thought that one play um, was really the difference in the game. We lost by one score. It was uh, we were up uh, going in halftime. We relaxed on the squib, and it and it hurt us. And uh, that's you know that's on me as the head coach to make sure that doesn't happen. But we will continue to educate um, our entire program on how to do things uh, at a high level all the time. You, you weren't having a lot of success with the ball in the first half. It was much tougher in the second. Kind of what, what did you see like, it's really on your side and on their side? Is, is kind of what caused that? Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, it's one of the top defenses in college football. We cannot discount that. Um, you know, so we had <coughs> some really good plays early on. They made some adjustments. That we made some adjustments uh, in the fourth quarter as well. Um, but just... They're, I mean, they're really good. <coughs> a couple more for Coach. In terms, well, it, it seemed like your your offensive line really stepped up today and did a much bit better job protecting James and and you know opening holes for Mason. Yeah, and I just you know William Lay at center, uh, we nominated him for the Burlesworth Bur Award. I'm hoping I, out of respect, pronouncing that right, um, as one of the best walk-ons in college football. And uh, he's in there playing center for us, which is essentially the quarterback of the offense. He makes everything go with the mic IDs and the run game, setting the protections, uh, getting us going um, as an offense. And uh, we'll, I mean, they're getting better every single week. And uh, it's two back-to-back -back weeks where it's an elite defensive line. Um, and they just went out there, battled, um, and we had some really good good plays and some really good success um, throughout the game against some really good, really good defense. You started Sylvain at defensive end as a true freshman and hadn't been playing football that long. 
Wesley Walker played significant because Caleb was out, like, and you were down several guys at that position. And, and just talk about some of these young guys that are being forced into big situations. Sure. And again, it goes back to how we do things, but I uh, was really proud of Sylvain. Um, he's just gotten better every single week and really every single day uh, that he's playing football for us. Um, he's going to be really good. He's getting better every day and uh, just really proud of him. It was interesting. His uh, family came over from Belgium uh, during the bye week and uh, they got to come to a college football practice in America. Doesn't quite look like the way it does over in Brussels. <laughs> and uh, just the way we do things and the attention to detail and the moving parts that we go through uh, to build this program to help these guys become really good college football players um, and to be successful for the rest of their lives. I thought it was an eye-opening experience for them, um, but really proud of him. I thought Weston Walker, um, you know, because we were down uh, basically the guys that have played Probably 85% of the nickel reps this entire season weren't playing today. And it doesn't matter. It's just next man up. Christian Campbell came out there and played at a high level. Wesley Walker came in, um, his first game ever playing defense. And I think maybe even his first play, they try to run a bubble screen tunnel screen, and Wesley makes a really good play um, on the perimeter against a really good uh, offense that was a lot of good skill players and uh, was out there battling and competing. And, uh, you know, it's really good to see Jemias Griffin's out there as a true freshman. Amari Brown is out there as a true freshman. Dylan Leonard, Dylan Devaney uh, playing at a high level as true freshmen. And, uh, you know, they're learning how we do things as a culture. And, uh, you know, the older guys are bringing them along and educating them, you know, what it takes uh, to play here and to play at a, at a high level. And we're, we're really, we're really close. Last one for Coach. You having a hard time with field position, just off special teams in particular and throughout well, the game? I mean, I thought uh, the one situation, um, obviously we wouldn't have wanted to um, have the punt return inside the 10. That was completely on me. It was not on one. That was all my fault. Um, I told him that. I told the offense that, um, that it was completely on me. And Presley Harvin and our punt team came out and flipped the field. I mean, that's awesome. The, the contributions that Jalen Askew and Nathan Cottrell are giving to us on special teams, uh, especially on the punt team as gunners, is, is really special. And it's good to see how hard they play and buy into that role, um, which to the outside world isn't a glamorous role. But in our culture, being a gunner-only punt team is as big of a deal as anything that there is uh, that we do. The starting punt team, when we go to pregame meal uh, four hours before the tip, the starting punt team eats first. And Nathan Cottrell and Jalen Ask are out there covering punts and flipping the field with Presley booming the ball. And uh, obviously we would love to have that squib uh, back right before the half. Can't get it back, but we've got to learn from it. Um, but other than that, I thought they, the coverage units did a good job other than that play. The one where they ran the reverse felt like it went longer than it did because um, it went elite players running sideways. But, um, you know, the guys understand what we have to do. A bunch of young guys on those teams, and they're just going to continue to get better and better and better. Okay.